Oh buddy, Andy here again. Well, I heard something on the radio this morning about the UK government's NHS reforms. Yes, I know it's got you switching off in droves already, but what they were talking about was the fact that nobody really understands what's going on and that people automatically distrust anybody who starts talking about any sort of privatisation in any shape or form of the NHS. I tend to agree with that, but many of us object to things that are already happening because we don't realise that they are happening. And that's the whole point of this video about explaining yourselves. One of the problems with governments is that they don't necessarily explain themselves. There is a reason for that. Sometimes they don't want you to know what's going on and they don't want you to have too much information. But it reminded me of my old workplace. It's coming up to very nearly a year since I lost my job. And um, since then I've always thought, still taken interest in the railways after I all I was working on them for all my working life, 36 odd years or whatever it was. So I've forgotten that already. And I follow people on Twitter and I follow uh, Twitter feeds, shall we say, that are based about railway, the railway personnel who tweeting about their daily lives, drivers, guards or whatever, uh, or companies or whatever it might be, or some of those slightly less um, formal ways of doing it. And what I've noticed in there and what I noticed when I was a railwayman myself was the fact that the general public just don't understand how things run and this can go for any type of industry if you you work for a particular industry or something and it's it, it's one of those that's well known, especially the old nationalised industries as they were that have been privatised or utility services, all those, even banks and that I suppose. There are always sort of uh, misconceptions the public just don't understand. But one of the reasons that the public don't understand is because they're never really told the truth about these things. I can speak, as I said, from experience through the railway and we hear all those old excuses about leaves on the line and everybody laughs and jokes about it. Believe me, if you're a train driver and you're driving a train that starts slipping around on leaves on the line. It's like driving a car on black ice. Anybody who's skidded on black ice will know exactly what that feeling's like. You're out of control, you don't know what you're gonna do, you're shit scared to be perfectly honest, and that's exactly what it's like for a train driver trying to drive a train, especially trying to stop a train, um, when they come up against the leaves on the line. It sounds funny, it sounds silly to everybody else unless you're that man in the seat. But once again, it's one of those things that's never really fully explained. And other things, ones that I've seen recently about, there was an occasion last week about uh, the overhead power lines were brought down up in uh, Peterborough and that sort of area or something like that. And there were other incidents of signal failures and, and so all the trains were, were stacked up. Another one where a, a slow train had been let in front of a fast train and the, all three of those examples and plenty more besides, all that people did was moan about the particular train operating company that was operating those services. And they were several different companies. I think some were Southern, some were North, Great Northeastern or whatever they're called now, Southwest Trains, etc. All of those particular incidents got nothing to do with the train operating company at all. It's not their fault one little bit. But did those companies turn around and say anything? I doubt it very much. It's the same, um, as I said, with my own situation where I was so many times people would moan about something and I used to get frustrated no end. Our company didn't stand up for itself and say, this isn't actually our fault. Yes, I know we're trying to resolve the blame. Everybody automatically lumps it straight onto the people whose train it is, but it's usually, or quite often, somebody else's fault. It's network rails fault. If the track doesn't work, it's network rails fault. If the signals don't work, it's network rails fault. If there's something on the track, it's generally their fault as well. An animal gets on the line, they haven't maintained their fences, etc., etc. The delays are usually caused, or often caused, by another party. It might not be network rail, it could be somebody else, but quite often it is. But the companies never tell you that. <laughs> and this used to frustrate me no end. And also, as I said, they just don't explain themselves. They don't explain why certain problems happen. Okay, yes, I know there's always certain people who will never listen, and it doesn't matter how many times you, you tell them, you can bash them over the head with something, they still don't get it. I saw another one the other day, um, a passenger complaining quite rightly, I suppose, that the the uh, what was it the air conditioning in the train was far too cold. Yes, it quite often is. I remember that, and I still suffer that myself. And they were, why can't the driver turn it down? 
driver can't touch it. It's got nothing to do with the driver. It's got nothing to do with anybody who's working on that train. It's set by the engineers <coughs> back at the depot or something like that. And that's where it has to be done. Yes, by all means, complain to somebody, but it isn't the driver. He, he's got no control. He can turn his own heat up and down, but <laughs> sitting in the train, it's as frustrating for any passenger as it is for you. Yes, that is one of those things that's the problem, should we say, of the, of the company themselves. But once again, that's never explained. You know, the, the driver would never turn around and make an announcement, or the guard probably make an announcement, sorry, the conductor these days, would make an announcement telling you exactly the reason why this thing's happened, because they'd probably get into trouble. They'd be outside of their comfort zone. They're not allowed to do this. They're not allowed to do that nowadays because of health and safety regulations, which have been put there for very good reasons. There was a case recently about somebody down in the southwest who lost their job because they got onto the track and picked something off of the track. There's a lot more to that case than meets the eye, but then it sounds stupid. Why can't somebody do that? For very good health and safety reasons. But once again, that probably wasn't explained, and so the tabloids get hold of the story and it all goes completely bonkers and everybody goes mad, etc. So endless frustrations, everybody. You don't, we, the general public, don't understand how these things work. How can we know how these things work? They're usually fairly complicated. Running a railway is a very, very complicated business, believe me. And when you get a train that runs from A to B, especially in, from Brighton to London, you would say, or from Hastings to London, on a, a commuting Monday to Friday or something, the fact that it ever gets there on time, to me, is an absolute wonder when you see, especially as a driver, the amount of trains that there are, everything has to run like clockwork. And it takes one little thing to mess it up. Of course, people complain, and I totally understand why they complain. But once again, maybe the companies, whoever they might be, should actually explain what goes on a bit better than what they do. And if they did, then people, OK, they might not be happy, but they might understand it a little bit more. It's like if there's ever a fatality, a suicide or whatever. People understand that it's got nothing to do with the trains. Yes, they're frustrated. Of course they are. It's delayed their journey by however long it might be. But at least they know the truth. I know. I've been there. You've probably been there. If you've ever been on a train and there's been a delay, you quite often don't get told the real story. That's not because the person telling you doesn't know the real story. It's because people... The line of command or whatever it is isn't as great as it could be. We've all heard, especially in the last year, with problems of lack of communication. One hand doesn't know what the other hand's doing. And, and that is the case all the time. The information doesn't filter through to the people who give it to the public. There's also that issue of people not being able to make decisions on their own. The driver, the conductor, the, you know, all those people, the people on the ground can't make a decision and say, right, we're going to do this with this train, we're going to run it to here. They can't do that. <laughs> they don't do that because somebody else has to make that strategic decision. Probably someone who's never driven a train in their lives, but that's the way that things work these days. And no one will make a decision off their own back because if they do and it goes wrong, they'll get into trouble. But you can rest assured that the decision that is probably made in the end is the one that the driver or the guard said, thought about originally because that's the way that it works as well sometimes but that'll take about two hours to sort out so if you're frustrated join the queue everybody else is frustrated but maybe if people did explain themselves whether it be governments train operating companies utility companies or anything like that it might be a bit better but then we'd be bombarded with so much information we wouldn't be able to take it on board and we'd dismiss most of it and it goes straight over our head anyway so maybe we're stuck where we are <laughs> Who knows? So that's just my little insight into some ideas. If you've got any of your own and you can explain why certain things happen or don't happen, maybe, maybe you can let me know. Anyway, thanks for your time. I'll speak to you again soon. Goodbye.